that's the kindness and goodness of God. That He will plant a seed in our lives where His will becomes primary and ours is secondary, where our hopes and dreams are God's hopes and dreams, where the, re- uh, the way we raise our family reflects the nature of God, the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, and all those things that we discussed, that those things can be found in your home. I know they're found in this church because I feel it when I come here and don't think it doesn't make a difference because it does. Come on. In closing, I know if we can get Sydney up here, I want to read you something. God is bringing about something new. Don't curse the days where God is harvesting in your life. And maybe that process can seem painful. In fact, I know it is. Right now there's some uncertainty to one degree about this opportunity, but there's no uncertainty that God is going to provide and take care of me. And that is the faith that will sustain us. Each of our lives will all go through something. And in this book, it's called Don't Curse Your Crisis. Now, I know that seems a little bit, be a little bit of a paradox. We, no one wants crisis. In fact, <laughs> we try to do everything we can as a people to avoid a crisis. But this book tells us in Don't Curse Your Crisis, it says, though you wouldn't have ordered it, somewhere deep inside, in a place almost untouched by conscious thought, praise is being birthed. Somehow, instinctively, you know that God is taking you to a place of total trust without condition and without compromise where you are just satisfied to know Him and let Him know you. And it goes on to say, maybe that's what He's been after all along anyway. 